for uh, ischemic cardiomyopathy by Dr. Musa Komi, a very eminent name in the field of uh, cardiac surgery in and uh, outside India. Uh, he is an alumnus of uh, Calicut Medical College, Kerala. And after graduation, he has joined the uh, railway hospital at uh, Madras and has uh, spent a lot of his professional time, performed more than about 10,000 uh, open heart surgeries. And uh, he has been a guest heart surgeon at uh, German Heart Institute Berlin and got trained under very eminent uh, surgeons there. And now presently he is uh, a consultant in Sims Hospital, Mumbai. His field of speciality is bypass heart surgery in conventional as well as beating heart, heart valve replacement and repair, high risk complex heart surgeries, pediatric heart surgery, mechanical circulatory support, aortic, aortic aneurysm surgery. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Inspector uh, President of this IMA, members of the IMA, my dear friends. It's very, uh, I sincerely thank the IMA for the for giving me an opportunity here to present my findings about one of the important challenges we face in medical science the treatment of uh, ischemic cardiomyopathy is one of my interesting field and I've done a lot of uh, good work in that and especially the uh, initial original work in India. Next slide please. Of course, already we introduced I have, I have, I did my education from Calicut Medical College and uh, Trent Medical College. Next slide please. I worked at Railway Hospital Bangalore in the 90s, almost up to 2001, uh, and also for a short period, about two to two and a half years, as a associate person at the Sri Ramchi Medical College, where we started the Paris in 1994. Next slide, please. Then I moved to Kerala, uh, Kuchin, where is my home state. I had also had a training from German Heart Institute, especially in uh, cardiac surgery for heart failure, heart transplant mechanical heart, elevates, those kind of things. Next slide, please. Now I have also extended my practice again back to Chennai. Request everyone to support me and this hospital. It has got a very good facility and we are conducting there all type of operations on adult pediatric, uh, then uh, aneurysms, valve surgeries, children, and cardiac failure, heart transplant, everything is there at affordable cost. Next slide, please. One of the most pressing points, the pressing problem now is the ischemic cardiomyopathy. It's the most common cause of heart failure in developing countries and as well as developing countries. Ischemic cardiomyopathy, next slide please. Ischemic cardiomyopathy can be defined as a cardiomyopathy or the left ventricular dysfunction following myocardial infarction or severe, severe coronary artery disease. It is a part of dilated cardiomyopathy. And almost 60 to 70 percent of the cause for the dilated cardiomyopathy is now coronary artery disease and ischemic cardiomyopathy. The, the one of the disease which is increasing day by day, the only disease which probably increasing day by day all over the world as well as in India is the ischemic cardiomyopathy or the cardiac failure related to or secondary to coronary artery disease. Next slide, please. So. The burden of disease in India is huge. There are about more than two crore people are suffering from cardiac failure and out of which maybe around 70% is due to the coronary artery disease. And annual incidence is nearly 1 million people. That means every year 10 lakh people are, or in around 10 lakh people are newly you know, diagnosed with the ischemic cardiomyopathy and cardiac failure in India. And the burden is increasing and what is the treatment and how to handle is going to be a question. Next slide please. So ischemic cardiomyopathy is not a single disease. It is a combination of two diseases. One is the extensive coronary artery disease like triple vessel disease uh, and more uh, as a part of the coronary artery disease. Next one is a left ventricular dysfunction associated with that. Severe dysfunction, that means left ventricular ejection fraction is less than 
and if it is severe, it is below 35 or 35 percent or below. So low into a low ejection fraction associated with this severe coronary artery disease that leads to the severe cardiac failure. Next slide, please. So I will present a few, um, you know, about three cases, very interesting cases to make you aware how it, the bypass operation or the surgical treatment, the new, how we can help this kind of patient. Now I have just operated five days ago, and uh, five days ago, uh, 77 year old man, no fast history of, uh, fast history of MI was there, but no other risk factor, he is not diabetic, nor, uh, you know, normal test. His uh, symptoms was the recent onset of distinct exertion and also chest pain discomfort, PND, and uh, and his blood investigation all showed normal. His X-ray showed cardiomegaly, echocardiogram showed severe left ventricular dysfunction. The left ventricular was dilated. It was almost a 7.8 centimeter diameter. The normal upper limit is. 5.4 centimeter, which was going up to 7.8 centimeter, and there was a regional wall movement abnormality suggesting ischemic heart disease. Then there was no MR. The left ventricular thickness was very good, left ventricular muscle thickness was good. That means that the muscle was remaining fairly good, it is not fully uh, destroyed, but it's not fully scarred. Still, muscle was good. And his infection, I forgot to write in this, his infection fraction was only 22%, very severe cardiac failure. The angiogram showed severe fibrous disease, and the target vessels were very good. That means they are all grafted vessels, good vessels. Next slide, please. We operated on him last uh, Wednesday, and he, you know, this slide, and you can see the post operative uh, parameters good blood pressure, we see this become quite good. The filling pressure is good, the saturation is good, everything is good. Next slide, please. This is his x-ray, and it shows severe cardiomegaly. And uh, severe cardiomegaly you can see here. Otherwise, blood condition is not much. That's why it's symptomatically less. Next slide, please. This angiogram showed severe coronary artery disease. This is the left coronary artery. You can see the left main artery here dividing into uh, dividing into LAD, the circumflex artery. You can see here there is a disease in the LAD you can all is disconnected and here up to here. And here the bottom here also to the uh, circumflex artery and points. And this is the right coronary artery which shows it should be like this. It shows after the uh, the approximal RCM is 100% block. So he had a severe tuberculosis disease. Next slide, please. We operated on him. We had a step and we had two graft, one to LAD and one to RCA. Uh, vein taken from the lower leg, suffused vein. Next slide, please. So he's recovering well. He is in the ICU you now. It's quite normal. Next patient which I operated uh, about one year back in Kerala. This was the next generation. A 36-year-old man with no history of MI. And what we see may, many, many times in ischemic heart cardiomyopathy is the silent MI leading to the cardiac failure. They don't have a history of MI. The first presentation is to the cardiac failure. And when we investigate, we find that they are already in the ischemic cardiomyopathy. And he was in class 4. He was orthopnea, he was on oxygen mask. He was on diuretics and dopamine. His echocardiogram showed only 13% EF, very severe cardiac failure. And there was LVH also. Uh, but the one thing I found in him was that the left ventricular was not very much dilated. It was around 6 cm or below 6 cm. Angiogram showed trivial, uh, severe trivial disease. This patient was very sick. Everybody suggested him heart transplant. But heart transplant in Kerala, it's not that easy. As well as the patient was not able to afford for that also. So he was referred to me. So I took a decision to operate and do a bypass operation on, on an emergency basis. We did get an off pump, that is without heart pump machine, without uh, CLNG. And he recovered very well. 
down the line one year, now his ejection fraction has jumped up to 45 percent. That is, is not easy now. Now is only mild cardiac failure. He is getting little bit of diverted. That's all. Now class one symptoms, normal activity. He is a carpenter. He is working very well with the minimum drugs. Next slide, please. Another patient which I operated almost five years back, again in Kerala, a 52-year-old man, he was obese, more than 110 kilo, he was hypertensive, severe angina, as well as severe dyspnea. The CCG shows SPT changes, suggestive of coronary artery disease. We did an echocardiogram which showed only 20 percent EF, severe dysfunction of LV. But one thing I found that LV was not dilated, his muscle thickness was very good, his left ventricular mass index, LV, MI was quite normal. Angiogram showed a severe pituitous disease plus left main coronary artery disease of around 40 percent. So we took a decision to operate on him, CABG, that also off pump bypass surgery. We did a complete revascularization and patient had a good recovery. To surprise, within four months, I saw the ejection fraction coming back to normal, 60 percent. And then now the patient after five years doing very well, he's a normal person, he's only on antipalatal medication for the bypass surgery and no medication on for the congestive or cardiac failure medication. That shows that how some of the selected or some of the good group of patients with severe coronary artery disease and left ventricular dysfunction can be helped by bypass operation which is which can be done anywhere now instead of waiting them for transplant or some other treatment which is which is not feasible or it is not a the real answer in our country because of lack of donors huge expenditure and many other problems not infrastructure many other problems are there so bypass operation really helps in selected and good number of patients with the escaping cardiomyopathy next slide please so what are the reasons for myocardial dysfunction or LV dysfunction in coronary artery disease? We all know that number one is cell death due to MI or anoxia or lack of oxygen. The cell death replaced by scar tissues. Next one is left ventricular remodeling that the dilatation of the left ventricle takes place secondary to the weakness that leads to further vicious cycle further reduces the left ventricular <coughs> function. The most important another aspect is hypernation of the myocardium. Hypernation means some group of myocardial cells, they don't die. They shut off their met metabolism and go for hypernation. They go for the dormant stage, but they are viable myocardium because of lack of oxygen, because of lack of blood supply. So these cells, hibernation cells are the one which can be recruited back to the functional myocardium after doing a uh, revascularization, both uh, uh, interventional as well as uh, surgical. So myocardial hibernation or the myocardial hibernation cells we recruit by using the, by making the revascularization. Next slide please. Hibernation, we all know that, you know, many of the animals, especially in uh, cold uh, areas, they go for hibernation for some of the uh, time in a year because when the, the uh, their living condition becomes extremely odd, they go for hibernation. They have a, they have a mechanism of reducing their metabolism and going for sleep or something like that for months. Like that, some cells in the myocardium goes for hibernation. Next slide, please. So, the management of CAD in low EF, one of the important factors, the, the, the idea behind doing CAD is to recruit this hibernating myocardium back to the functioning element. That is how the EF increases as well as the functional improvement and the functioning improves. Next slide, please. This is a pathophysiological consequences of left ventricular dilatation. There will be myocardial injury, myocardial cells death. That goes to the remote increase in the and reduce in the in the stroke volume. Then leads to dilatation of the heart. 
further reduces the left ventricular function and increases the cardiac failure. Next slide, please. So, when a patient comes with ischemic cardiomyopathy, they usually have put some other comorbidities also or adverse factors will be with them. One of the most of them are old population, older population in uh, people and usually they have mitral valve disease also, secondary to the left ventricular dilatation, there will be, they can have mild or moderate or even severe MR and you have mineral situation. So, in cases with the mild MR, okay, we can leave it without the correction, but moderate and severe MR needs correction along with the CAH. They usually, many of them have diabetes mellitus as well as chronic renal failure also associated uh, with the, uh, due to the cardiothetical also, the poor LV function. I have operated from 13% onwards and that may be the first time anyone doing attempting a bypass operation on a 13% here. Very risky situation. The left ventricular volume will be usually enlarged, you know, usually like a 6 cm and 7 centimeter. The last patient I operated it was 7.8 centimeter. The bigger the ventricle size is difficult to manipulate. The surgeons find it difficult to uh, do the anastomosis and they handle the heart during surgery. They can have conduction defects also in some of the cases. Next slide. Please. The clinical feature I am not, not going to, you know, it's all everybody knows the clinical feature of cardiac failure. It's mainly because of systemic congestion, pulmonary congestion, and reduced cardiac output. So as a part of reduced cardiac output, we will have fatigue, tiredness, giddiness, all those kind of things will be there. And as a part of the pulmonary congestion, we will have PND, orthopnea, and even dyspnea on exertion. And as a part of congestion in the systemic venous congestion, we will have a febrile edema, or you can have hepatomegaly, have ascites, basically, all LJVP, all those things. Some of them can have arrhythmias also, and conduction defects also. And some patients can come with the, you know, when the pumping power is low, when the EF is low, when the cardiac output is low, the blood stasis of the ventricle, which leads to the development of uh, clots in the ventricle, or the atrium, which can lead to Episodes and uh, all those kind of things. Next slide, please. In ma majority of the patients with the ischemic cardiomyopathy have heart failure, congestion symptoms. 75 80% of them have uh, congestion of systemic as well as pulmonary condition. That is, dyspnea on exertion, orthopnea, EAP, those kind of things. And about 20% of them have in and around angina pain that is related to the is key, one way is key. Next slide, please. The diagnosis, well, carefully you need to take the history, other thing, and examination, and chest x-ray, which will show the dilatation of the heart, cardiomegaly, pulmonary congestion, if it is there, can show the 12 lady ECG is important, it can sometimes show the conduction blocks, those kind of things. Echocardiography is the most important test, which will show us the left ventricular function, left ventricular dimension, and many, whether there is a MR, there is any other clot, then also it will show us how is the pulmonary uh, pressure. Some of these patients will go for pulmonary hypertension, as well as some of them will go for right ventricular failure. So the right ventricle, you need to assess all these things, and how much is the scarring, what is the, what is the dimension of the left ventricle, right, uh, and other chambers. And most important is right ventricular function. If the right ventricular function is already affected due to the left ventricular dysfunction, those patients will not get much benefit from the any treatment. In fact, from transplant, they are not for Or uh, CABG, difficult. They will have high mortality and mortality. And even LVAD or even artificial heart also. So, the idea is to pick up these kind of cases before the right ventricle goes into problem. If any patient diagnosed with any cardiac failure, whether it is ischemic or even non-ischemic, 
if the right ventricle is already affected, if the right ventricle is dilated or the right ventricle is already compromised, if the TAP C is very low, then those patient has no answer. Today there is no answer. We have to come out with what is called full, complete uh, artificial heart. Maybe the only answer. Other than that, there is no answer now. So, idea is to pick up this kind of a cardiac failure patient early, before they, before it damages the right ventricle. Before damaging the right ventricle, we have a lot of answer for these uh, patients and we can better their life. Next slide, please. Blood investigation, all these in usual things to assess the other end organs, function like uh, liver, kidney, all these things very important because affect these, these uh, organs, if affected, the post-operative problems will be more morbidly to be more than Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Yeah, as I said, you know, this is a classical example of an X-ray of a steaming cardiomyopathy patient. You can see the large, uh, left ventricular left dilatation as well as you can see the pulmonary congestion. This event, uh, this is echocardiogram of uh, the same patient operated. You can see the left ventricle is so large, it's dilated like anything. You can see, are you moving? It's not bad, I'm not going to show you very well. So, management of is giving cardiomyopathy. So, we have a medical therapy, we all know that they can use the therapy. Also direct drugs of the load production, beta blockers to reduce the heart rate. Essentially, all these things uh, are centered at increasing the coronary blood flow, reducing the oxygen demand, and reducing the systemic as well as pulmonary vascular resistance. There are some device therapies are also there, like uh, CRT and other things are there. The most important is the surgical treatment. If it's irreversible loss, as I said, then transplant. But the transplant is not going to be an answer because the availability of the donor heart is very low. If you do 100 or 100 and 200 transplants like in a country like India, where millions of patients are dying because of, uh, maybe thousands of patients are dying because of advanced cardiac failure, ischemic and non-ischemic. The heart transplant is not going to, how many people are going to benefit of that? If you do 1,000, 100 or 200 transplant per year, it's not going to be an answer at all. We have to, uh, we have to come out with some uh, better methods to improve their life. Next slide, please. So medical management alone is a poor outlook. It has shown that 20 to 30 percent survival only in two years. That means more than 70 percent of people die in two years' time. So the Medical management alone is not an answer. Heart transplant, I already told. But artificial heart and left ventricular assist devices, uh, India, in our country, it is still not because of the huge price, price of the world and a crore, as well as uh, other many other infrastructural uh, difficulties are there promoting uh, LVADs in India. Not many things are there. We have to go a long way, not like the Western countries. Whereas in Germany and other things, they all daily put in left and right, left ventricular assisted devices. Any patient, their patients, they usually don't die of uh, uh, lack of heart transplant. Thus, immediately I have seen and I have worked in this entire hundreds of patients will be waiting for one year, two years in hospitalized with the dopamine drip, waiting for the heart transplant or artificial heart. Every day, three, four uh, left ventricular assisted devices are put and patients are moving very well. That is all government sponsored and, and government sponsored healthcare, which is not there in our country. Very, a very unfortunate situation. We have to work out. We have to work out that millions of patients or hundreds, thousands, hundreds of patients, thousands of patients are dying daily because of cardiac failure and donor heart is not there. So we have to develop that our own heart, we should not do other thing other than there is no because the important must which must be which how many people can afford a crore or a you know common people cannot. Next slide please. So in this aspect, in 1980s, there was an attempt to treat 
cardiac mm, failure in uh, using a surgical method. But at that time, the cardiac surgery was in a very infancy period, not developed this much like what it developed in 90s and now in this century. So at that time, below 40 percent a year, don't do any surgery because it is a prohibitive more than 50 percent risk was there. But the things have gone very different. In 1990s, we introduced a new concept called beating heart bypass surgery or off-term bypass surgery, doing bypass surgery without heart lung machine, which reduces the morbidity and pump related problems. More than that, now the recent in the last one or two decades, the development in the anesthesia, development in better understanding, better assessment of the patient, better post-operative care, and so many other things have improved the result of uh, bypass surgery as well as open heart surgery. So now we have to go back and do think and do the uh, bypass surgery whether it will help patients at least uh, improving their functional capacity and longevity of life. Next slide, please. So CABG is a good result. CABG in uh, ischemic cardiomyopathy, a lot of papers have come now because of that. I already told one very important factor which uh, improved the result is because of the off pump or the bypass surgery done without using the heart lung machine. In almost all the uh, all the papers, all the work done, including mine, major portion portion of the surgery was done by using off pump technology. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay. And just, just brush. Just one, two, half minute. So many papers have come like this. Next. So many papers. Next. Yeah, this is my work. In the last 10 years, I have done uh, 181 cases of CABG on patients with uh, less than 40 percent EF. There was from 13 to 40 percent. Uh, age from young age to 78 year old the average graph like this and I had only three mortality post-operative. One was due to the cardiac failure, low cardiac output, other two was because of sepsis. So there was a lot of functional improvement. Most of them improved very well and doing well even after 10 years and one of the patients has come back to normal. Next slide please. So in this session, you know, ischemic cardiomyopathy is a most important problem in India and CAVG plus medical treatment produces a good result. Off pump CABG is safe and ideal in this situation. Next slide please. In conclusion, CABG in patients with the CAD and severe left ventricular dysfunction can be performed with a low mortality. CAD can be considered safe and effective therapy for the low EF patients with ischemic heart disease.